location with the men and women of law enforcement. All suspects are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. What we're trying to do is um, just acclimate the horses to some of the things that they're going to meet on the street during the Mardi Gras season. Different noise obstacles that we're going to use, fireworks and gunshots. Um, just anything that we can find that they may not see on the street, but at the same time, just so they get used to sounds, different sounds that they're not used to. We serve two major functions. One is an enforcement function that we can see trouble from a distance that perhaps a, a foot officer won't be able to see from his point of view because he's surrounded by people. The other function, public relations. People love horses and animals, you know, and just like all of us do. Hopefully, we're going to have a trouble-free Mardi Gras. majority of the people out here on Canal for the parade, but when the parade's over, uh, you'll find most of these people out here on Bourbon Street. And then it's really going to get thick, and uh, to be quite frank, I'm glad I'm on a horse and not on my feet. driving a truck here. Looks like there was not no way he's gone. Don't know how to drive. We're gonna attempt to stop him. Yeah. We'll see your driver's license, man. Right. Number one, this is not legal for the street. Legal exhaust. Number two, you got a tail light out. The guy told me nice and then number three, you've been lighting it up down the streets. No, I never burned out. You never burned out. Why don't the hassle to come down here? Because it ain't a hassle, but when you start breaking the law, like going down a one-way street and rubbing and burning the rub in the street, that's well, that's a hassle. Turn. I really okay. did. And when I seen I made the wrong turn, I backed up. Oh, I know that. I, you know what I mean? Come on, it's a legit. Don't mind your cruising, park, and let them look. Well, don't come down here, ride up down the street, rev your engine. Yeah. Don't burn your tire. Well, go out to a private lot and do all that. Everybody, they like that guy. You know what I'm saying? This is, well, let me, let me ask you this question. Would you like paying the tickets for the fines I could write you? Would you? All right. How much you like to do it then? Don't tell me that. I am telling you legit. Everybody, they like that guy. You know what? What you got? What you gonna write your tickets, man? All right, we got a guy in the French Quarter with his little hot rod riding around, showing off, spinning his tires. He tells us old people like to see that. But it makes our job harder, because if we don't enforce the law, people are going to start doing that more often. There you go. That's Mardi Gras. People are cranking up, getting ready to have their good old times. they fun. Can't wait to the big party. Some of these people out here have good fun. Some of them get too crazy, get in trouble, get too tanked up, get out of hand. This is a time where it's like a bewitching hour, you know? Towards the end, more and more people get aggressive. So this is where the more fights break out. So I'd be glad when we shut all of it down.
103 out, seven hour block of bird. you call the horses in for crowd control it gets tricky because even though they do work down here on the street they can and will get spooked it's kind of hard to it's hard sometimes to uh make us you don't want apprehension when you're on horseback because you're trying to control the, the subject you're trying to uh, affect an arrest on as well as uh control the horse because you don't want innocent bystanders to get injured as well the Naval Criminal Investigative Service, in cooperation with the New Orleans Police Department, has put together a drug or suppression operation for the Mardi Gras. We have uh, two naval vessels that have arrived in the area, and because these people will be coming into the area as tourists, our prime function is going to be to uh, protect these individuals uh, from any criminal activity that may be directed towards them. Now, we do that so that these people can be protected from any type of interference that they may experience when they come into New Orleans to have a good time. What we'll do um, when the guy, when you're talking to the guy and making the deal, you know, just kind of, you know, as you're talking to him, start doing this. That's what we did last year. All right. And then the uh, comes off when the deal. Yeah. Then take your hat off. Consummated. When the deal's over, and then they'll move in and uh, make the arrest. As part of the. Uh, the operation, we, we have the undercovers uh, dressed up like sailors. They come down here, and uh, a lot of the street characters hit on them for uh, for drugs. Some of the prostitutes hit on them, and by that way, we're able to clean up the streets a little bit. Uh, you know, they don't stay in jail for a few days, maybe through Mardi Gras. All right, we back down Bourbon Street, walking toward Orleans Avenue. Somebody got some cuffs? You got cuffs? I got them. Head, a white rag on his head. Check it out. We're going to check it out. Don't worry about it. Hey, man, I, I think he gave me 
the exact change here. I, I couldn't believe that guy stood there for almost all that time. two minutes and counted out exactly $10. That was a good hit. Did they get the other guy? Yeah, they got both. Okay. When they completed the deal, we, we got the signal. We moved in, made the arrest. He had the two $20 bills that the undercovers used, and those are the two rocks that he bought. He went down the street. He got them from somewhere. We weren't able to uh, see where he got them from, but uh, he came back with it. They made the deal down a block, and we made the arrest. <laughs> against the law, too. That's paraphernalia. That's against the law, too. Uh, we had the undercovers out there. They were approached by, by Tom here and, and a friend there. And uh, apparently they negotiated a, a prostitution deal for $20. No. And uh, once they gave the signal, we moved in, we made the arrest, we taking her in for prostitution. She had some crack paraphernalia on her. And uh, we're going to check him out and see if he has any warrants on or anything. Is that music lay in here? Step up in there. You, you want to leave him cuffed or you, you need your cuffs back? I don't think she's going to be able to. All right. Go, go ahead and have a seat, man. I didn't do a thorough search on him. He might have some crack on I did. I did. Oh, did? I did pretty good. I didn't go down his drawers or nothing, but all his pockets, okay. Now, y'all behaving there, all right? Why don't you run it down? Okay, well, the guy was coming across the street. I just shot off to him, hey, you know, we can, uh, he can help us out maybe find uh, some women around here. He said, hey, I got a lady for you. And he called his girl over. He said she, he told me he was this was his girl and she could hook us up. And he told us we'd go down to a, uh, he wanted to catch a cab on Tulane. Okay. And then we were all going to walk down to Tulane and go, he wanted to go to a clean hotel somewhere down on the other side of Canal. Okay. And uh, we negotiated for 50 bucks. Okay. That, that's that's enough. That's enough to take them both. Okay. All right, man. Um, overall, it's a, it's a good night. We took some more people off the street, and hopefully, it'll be a better Mardi Gras for us. We probably got 90,000 to 100,000 people in the streets on Bourbon and spreading off into the residential areas. Everybody's in an uh, intoxicated state right now. The, the, the frustration's going to flood. And they've been pushing arm in arm and elbow in elbow with people all night. And they're just going to break at the seam. And it's good. You know, we had a high vantage point up here. And with the number of uh, the guys coming in with the leather jackets and the garrison caps as a deterrent. It's uh, very intimidating to the crowd. That's how we're able to control it real well. Fight in the middle of Bourbon 
in St. Peter. We got about uh, 90,000 people down here right now. Apparently, the guys are uh, reverting their attention from the balconies with the bare-breasted women to fight one another. Typical male frustration. six guys for public drunkenness and breaking uh, property, and at that time, uh, the crowd started throwing bottles, and it was getting a little, a little out of control, so we called in the troops on the horses, which you saw that came in and, and did a good job of clearing us, and that's the only way, you know, the guys on 40 can just push against the crowd, but the people aren't going to push against six uh, thoroughbred horses. We're getting ready to organize the staging area with police officers, state troopers, correctional officers to basically go down Bourbon Street and just close it. We're going to take over loudspeakers. We're going to have uh, sanitation workers behind us starting to clean up this mess that you see, bottles, plastic that's been here. Uh, we clear the streets and gives the other agencies to come in. Let's wash down the street, pick up the trash, and uh, let the police officers and all these people who work in these establishments and restaurants go home and get a break, which they haven't had in about two weeks. This is the last parade of Mardi Gras 1995. It's called the Police Parade. We'll come back, take back the streets, and let the city have it.